Today, I'm gonna be breaking down the difference between an OG Air Jordan 1 low and a retro Air Jordan 1 low. And there's gonna be a lot of people saying that these shoes are the exact same and there's nothing to worry about, but trust me when I tell you, they are not the same. And if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA show. Hey. On this channel, I love breaking down sneakers like this and showing you the differences between the styles, cuts, and materials, and especially why this influences the value of these shoes as well. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing and joining the fam. We are very close to a million subscribers and you could be the next one to get us there. So with videos like this, I love to start with the box and then go with the bottom of the shoe and work our way up. So let's go ahead and remove the shoes and break down the boxes first. When it comes to the OG Air Jordan 1 box, this is something that is very similar to the one that we saw back in 1985 and they're bringing this back now giving us that nostalgic vibe on the OG retros that we're currently getting in this time and typically on these boxes you see a lift off lid with the all black top with the red Nike with the swoosh and then that the same thing on the sides and the size tag in the front and on the size tag it reads Air Jordan 1 low OG retail 130 bucks now when it comes to the Air Jordan 1 low retro this one right here is a very different box right you have a regular hinge door lid right here you have an all black box with the gold jump man no other hits around the box and on the size tag it reads air jordan one low retail 90 bucks so just off a of first glance when it comes to the boxes it's easy to tell off of that and when it comes to the retail price right typically we talk about og lows they're going to be a little bit higher simply because they come better when it comes to the quality and execution on the sneaker which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video but this is a quick look at the two boxes and an easy way to tell the difference between the two whenever you see them just in the box one thing that i always love to talk about on this channel as well as the history of a sneaker and how it even got to this point. So one reason why people love the OG low so much is because they try to recreate the original versions back from 1985. And we saw this specific colorway in particular released back in 85 as well. When you think about Chicago's, Breads, Royals, Shadows, Metallics, different colorways like that, and you see it on an OG model, whether it's a high top or a low top, people are gonna naturally gravitate to it and easily cause the price to increase because of it. And that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the retro models, it's just that they're a little bit different and they don't have as much nostalgia behind them and the quality just isn't really the same as well which we'll get into in a second so starting with the outsole on these two sneakers as you can see everything is pretty much identical obviously the color is different but besides that you got your normal air jordan one outsole now going up to the midsoles everything right here exactly the same as well all white with the white stitch and obviously this could change based on the colorway of the sneaker but when it comes over to the overall print the shape and the form of the shoe and everything like that it's the same thing now this is the part of the video where things start to differ. When I pick up the OG low and I feel the materials on the upper because that's something that most sneaker heads typically do. They always wanna understand the quality of the shoe. This is gonna feel like a pretty soft leather. It feels like, yes, if it does crease, it's gonna be fine because it's not gonna be like a crack or like a crazy wrinkle, like the cheaper type of leather that you would see on a Jordan sneaker. So for that in particular, people really appreciate that. Now, when I pick up the retro Air Jordan 1 low, if I feel the leather and the materials on it, it feels a lot more stiff, a lot more smooth and it doesn't really have that premium vibe to it even though yes these two shoes are barely over a hundred or just under a hundred dollars you still have a nicer feel when it comes to the OG low and the reason why I decided to do these two shoes in particular because they're both leather obviously the colorways are different but there are gonna be different variations when it comes to materials on the uppers and things like that but I'm telling you overall as a whole yes there's gonna be unique situations but as a whole these are two good representations of these models now another thing that I want you guys to look at on the OG OG low is the cut on the leather. You can actually see the cut and the finish and the kind of rough edges right here around the toe box or anywhere around the other lines that you see where the materials may be overlapping and the different leather pieces that go throughout the upper. Now, when you look at the retro low, yes, it does have a similar shape, but we're actually talking about the cut. When they cut this leather, they actually tuck it down and you actually have a whole different look. And it doesn't really have that rough edge. It's almost like a more clean and refined look. And some people may even like that look and I understand why they do because it does give it a little bit more of a professional look so for that I think it's kind of 50 50 and you would have to decide which style do you like more when it comes to the overall presentation of the cut of the leather now looking at the tongues of the sneakers you have a mesh right here but it's a lot more stiff on the retro compared to the OG style and these are a lot more flimsy and less thick when it comes to the overall padding that's inside of the tongue I always call these like a SB Jordan 1 kind of vibe it gives you a little bit puffier ankle and a puffier tongue but one thing that I I don't like about the tongue as 
well. It's a little bit more extended and when you wear the shoe, the tongue sticks up really high in front of your shin. So that's always something to be aware of when you're talking about putting this shoe on and putting this shoe on. Another thing that a lot of people really love about the OG tongues as well, like I said, without having as much padding, it kind of gives you more of a free forming feel inside the shoe and it feels just a lot more comfortable, a lot more lax without that stiffer foam kind of restricting your foot movement. These both come with standard flat laces and you have your loopholes here at the front. Now, as you can see right here, this one's cut in and this is more of a piece that is attached over the top. And then on the tongue of the retro, you have a Jumpman embroidered. And then on the OG style, you got that Nike Air. And this is something that everybody loves to see as well. And definitely a reason why shoes have more value simply because of the Nike Air. Another thing to note as well, the OG style comes with an additional pair of laces and the retro doesn't. So if you wanna switch it out, you're gonna have to go find another pair or use a pair from an old pair of shoes that you may have already had in your collection. So that's always something to consider as well. Now taking it to the sock liners and the insoles, the sock liners, the materials look pretty similar on these in particular, but the insoles have a different look. On the retro, you have a Jumpman and on the insoles on the OGs, you have a Nike Air. The OG definitely brings more of a nostalgic vibe when it comes to rocking that shoe and seeing the Nike Air. And like I said earlier, that's always a big factor for a lot of sneakerhead. Now going to the back of the shoe, you can see you have the Air Jordan Wings logo, but it definitely looks different, right? This one's more embroidered on the rear end of the heel a lot bigger and in a different placement compared to on the OG at the top end that's more stamped into it and it's on a different piece of material. And this has a lot to do with the cut of the sneaker which we're gonna get into now. When you put these two shoes side by side, you could say, oh yes, they both look the same. But when you really start to break down the tail end of the sneakers, the overall height, the width, especially the cuts and where the materials are placed, you can definitely tell there is a huge difference on just the overall height around the ankle area and then the actual materials and where they're cut and placed at the ends. So if you look right here on the retro, you can see you have a little square rectangle. This kind of gives you that high top vibe, but more compressed down into a low top compared to here, they kind of eliminated that area that you would see on the high top in the center of the foot around the back end of the heel. And they just brought it down and made it more of a clean look here with less pieces of material on the back end. So when you look at the back end of these two shoes side by side or from the heel on the back ends, you can definitely start to tell the difference when it comes to the overall shape and the configuration of the shoe. Another shoe that I wanted to mention in this conversation as well is something like the Travis Scott OG Low. Now this has the same cut as the OG low. The only thing that you're gonna see as a major difference on this shoe in particular is the backward swoosh. So some people may get this one confused. Is it a retro or is it an OG low? But when you look at the back end and you see the tab right here with the black and the blue, that's definitely going to be an easier indicator for you to understand that this is the OG low. So I personally have highs, lows, mids, retros, retro pluses, zooms, you name it. I got a bunch of different variations of Air Jordan ones in my collection. I have worn all different styles. I wear these styles. I wear these styles. I haven't worn these two colorways in particular, but I have worn these styles. I haven't got to these ones yet, but this is going to be my summer rotation sneaker right here. But either way, I know what it feels like to wear all the different shoes and I'm telling you right now, the OG style in my opinion feels a lot better and I think it looks a lot better as well but I got no shame in rocking my retro lows either. So now let's talk about pricing and demand behind these two shoes and why the values are so far apart. So when it comes to the OG low, you're gonna have a few things that stick out that a lot of people appreciate. It gives you that nostalgic vibe. They come correct when it comes to the OG colorways and the overall materials on the shoes. The retros, again, there's nothing wrong with it, but at the same time, you're not gonna see on average the same type of materials and the cut is a little bit different than that OG nostalgic vibe. So that kind of diminishes the value a little bit. Now, obviously you're gonna have those special releases that might be worth a little bit more than your average everyday OG low and stuff like that. There's always the different variables, but on average between the two, you're naturally gonna see a OG low be worth a lot more money than a retro low. And at one point, not that many people even wanted a OG low. Everybody was so fascinated about the high tops and then they realized that the high High tops were going up in value so they started to resort to the OG lows and then those started to go up in value so then they went to retro lows and now people are starting to buy Jordan mids and again I own mids in my collection as well I don't like the new mids because they're not as good as the old mids which we could have a whole nother video about that one if you want to see the differences between the two because when it comes to new mids and old mids man I'm telling you right now they are not the same but either way that's a little bit off topic let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section 
question. How do you guys feel about this? Did I miss anything? Let me know what I missed. And also, let me know if you plan on going after one shoe or the other or which ones you have in your collections and how they feel. And just drop overall feedback around these two shoes down below in the comment section because we have some people in here that's watching the video that may be on the hunt for these two shoes and may have never owned it before and they want to know which one feels the best or which one has the best materials or or whatever you know they might have a bunch of different questions that i might not answer so let me know what y'all think down below in the comment section i appreciate you as always and if you got any value from this video again don't forget to hit that subscribe button we are very close to a million subscribers okay i know we only need 800,000 more but that's okay because one person at a time, we will get there. All right, you guys. I'll see you in another one. I'm out. Yo, if you enjoyed this video and want to grow your collection or make extra money on the side, I built a VIP mastermind that will teach you everything that I've learned about growing my sneaker collection over the past 15 years. This will also give you access to the DNA fam in my VIP community where we talk about investing outside of sneakers. And don't worry. If you don't plan on joining the VIP community, it's okay. I also set up a private DNA fam community that gives you access to all the behind the scenes looks from the studio and multiple chances to win free sneakers and gear from weekly and monthly challenges. So all you need to do is click on the link down below in the description or the first link pinned in the comment section. That will get you set up and into the community. I'm excited to see you guys on the inside. If you made it to the end of this video, drop a comment down below and let me know what was your favorite Disney childhood movie when you were growing up? Man, Toy Story, Lion King. Oh, the list goes on. I don't know. I'll let you guys answer that one.